I like to think I'm an ordinary guy that somehow manages to keep his eyes open. I think that's what's really most important. Some people argue about whether it's science or whether it's art, and long ago I quit arguing with them. I just let them argue about it, and then I continue to do whatever it is I'm doing. And I'm happy with what I do. Maybe it's controversial just to be an ordinary guy. My principal affiliation is Harvard Medical School in Church's Laboratory. Uh, and I am surrounded by scientists who choose to be scientists, but see, I discovered that many of them have poetic souls. The separation between art and science is an artifact of the counter-enlightenment of the Romantic era. You know, in many ways, art is like quantum physics. If you're an artist, you have to be ready to describe the whole world. But the problem with that is you can't describe something that you choose to remain clueless about. There was this guy in the court of Caesar Augustus. His name was Marcus Vitruvius Polio. And he wrote that his great opus was called De Architectura. He said, these are the things an artist needs to know. He said, we had to be good writers. And we have to know how to draw, of course. We have to be good drafts people. We had to know about geometry and optics. And he said, we had to be good at figures. So trying telling an artist these days that they have to know arithmetic, he said, we had to know something about history and natural and moral philosophy, something about music and about the science of law and physics. He said we had to know about the motions of the heavenly bodies and their relationships to each other and the motions of the human body and its proportions. And this is something that inspired Da Vinci 1,500 years later. The Vitruvian man was named after this guy of Vitruvius. I'm so crestfallen when an artist comes to me and says, I decided to go into art because I hate arithmetic. This, the deep connections between art and mathematics have been nearly lost. It's a sad thing. And nowadays, even music and history is dropped from the list. Artists of our own era know nothing about natural history or moral philosophy or mathematics. I think it's one of the greatest tragedies of our times. How can one human being, how can one mind contain all of this information from all of these different fields and all of these different vernaculars? But 2,000 years ago, Vitruvius anticipated that question. He said that everything is automatically connected with everything else. All you really need is kind of natural curiosity and the ability to pay attention. And if you're exposed to all of this from a young age, the connections between everything become obvious, that you have to on purpose decide, I'm not gonna pay attention to this. I'm, I'm gonna choose not to know this. It's automatic. This great synthesis of ideas is something inherent in human nature. I believe it's so. You know, human beings were never designed to do just one thing. Human beings were designed to do everything. I mean, you know, you had to go hunt and you had to make your tools and you had to, you know, cook your food and you had to, like, find the best fruit and you had to, like, impress the girls or impress the boys. And, you know, and now we spend our whole lives in one room doing one thing over and over and over again. And you drive back and forth to work one way in one car with one spouse. You know, I think maybe all of our problems or many of our problems come from the fact that we forgot that we were designed to do everything. You know, it's part of the modern frustration. What I look for, the magic moment, when I realize that 
there is this situation where you can put art and science together like a Chinese finger puzzle. You know, those things that you can't pull your fingers apart. And then if you pull them apart, you have neither science nor art. That's the magic moment. <laughs>